Hi guys, you see this? This is my new spinning chair. Look at how pretty it is. I took the wheels off and just put on casters, but what I needed was, because I'm so short, I needed a low chair with the, low, with the narrow seat this way. And after shopping and looking and shopping and looking, this is what I found. Now, it could be just one inch lower would be perfect because my feet aren't quite touching the floor. Not quite, but close enough. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's so pretty. And I can lean back and spin. So what we're going to do today to celebrate my new chair, and because I've just come out of the dark time, the anniversary of my husband's death, I wanted to have some fun. So, Tay-Tay's on a mission. What we're going to do today is we're going to go back to the basics and we're going to yeet for yarn. So I have my list here. I have my fibers there. I have my dice here. I just need a pen and paper to write down what we get. All right, one second. So our local real estate people are constantly sending us these little things in the mail. So this is what I'm using. Alrighty, let's get started. So the first thing we need to roll for, in case you haven't seen me do Yeet for Yarn before, here they are. So we're going to do roll number one, number of fibers. We have to do five fibers. Holy crap. So five fibers. Now, because I got a five, I'm just going to spin to roll to see which one we take out. So take out six. Take out number six. So we'll use one to five. That makes it fairly simple. All right, roll number two. Let's see what we get for add-ins. Three, embellishments. We always get embellishments. I want something else. That didn't really end. Two, sequins. We spin with sequins all the time. Give me something new. <sighs> I think this dice is loaded. Stelina. There we go. We'll work with that. All right. Now we're going to go for blending style. Six. So we're going to do it in chunks. Spin style. Five, coreless core spun, huh, from chunks. That's actually going to work. I'm going to have to go see what the uh, kitty cats are losing their mind about. They're racing in and out of the kitchen, or kitchen, in and out of the house. And finishing style, two. We're going to chain ply our coreless core spun. Interesting. Well, there's our notes. I'm going to gather the stuff we need and we will get spinning this yeet for yarn. Be back in a second, guys. All right, here's what we're working with. We have our five fibers. So it's faux cashmere, some stripey flamingo colored roving, some of this, um, this is a luxury blend from Paradise Fibers, I think. We have some green, I'm going to guess merino, and some yellow, I have no idea. But those are our colors. And I have this little container. Um, Stelina, Angelina, Firestar, Trilobal Nylon, whatever you want to call it. I have this little container from a Paradise Fiber package that I got. So we're just going to throw that in. All right. And now we have to do this in chunks and cordless core spin it before we chain play. Don't mind my cats. They're having a moment. I'm not sure what's going on, but they're just being crazy. All right. So I'm going to take my Firestar, Stelina, Angelina, whatever you want to call it. 
and I'm just going to grab just a little bit and pull it off into a chunk. All right, let's get some of this stuff. This has obviously gotten felted, so just loosen that up. We're going to spin it. The dice says. There we go. Here's a chunk of some yellow. I want the color to end because we got the white from the full cashmere. So we'll just fluff this all up. And we use a bit of this pink. I think I got this from Camage Fiber Arts. It's just such a stunning pink color. Like so flamingo-esque. It's gorgeous. We'll rip this up into chunks. Chunks. Some green. A little more of this in there, and we we'll just sprinkle that in there, and then we're just gonna mix it all up. Okay, so that's our bin we're gonna spin from. So I'm just going to start cordless core spinning this, and I'll just put you on time lapse so you can watch as it develops and then I will chain ply it and we'll see what we end up with because I think this is a interesting color combination and some interesting techniques so we're going to see how this turns out in the end so let me get you on the time lapse and we'll get spinning this bin of randomness it be fun. So here we have it, just a few yards of our core spun chain plied yarn and all these crazy colors. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some yarn and we're going to just stitch it into an edging and see how it would look if it was actually worked up. It is, I love, it's so poofy. I didn't worry about keeping it really consistent. I wanted a lot of poof on it. So it's definitely got the poof and it's got like the sparkly because it wasn't blended in any way it tended to go into clumps which i really like it gives it little sparkly bits and just the way the yarn is wound on it makes it look like this side's more blue and this side's more pink but when you actually stretch it out it's going to be you know pink into blue so the colors are more you know stretched out anyways i'm going to grab just some plain yarn and we're going to play with this and see what we can come up with uh, to use this yarn in a project. One second. 
All right, I just had some fingering weight sock yarn in white, and I'm using an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter. I did just did a foundation single crochet row of 20 stitches just to have something to work with. Now, I have to say, I just balled this up, and it's it's perfectly balanced. I don't know how I manage that, but there's no pigtailing or over twist or anything and I'm like wow <laughs> look at me you'd almost think I knew what I was doing all right so I'm going to just single crochet one and I'm going to just work over that yarn in single crochet and then I think I'll work behind the yarn for a single crochet then work over the yarn and then behind the yarn. Now using an eye hook with a fingering or sock weight is very oversized hook so it's going to have very nice loose stitches. Oh and here comes Bobble. I don't know if you can see him but he's seeing the yarn coming up from the basket on the floor and he's very intrigued. Bubble. No, he's not going to look up. All right, back to work. Oops, did two single crochets over. Now, the reason I'm going behind every other stitch is to give it those spaces where it's not constrained by the yarn. So you get this very nice texture to it and you know what I would probably use this as not just an edging but as part of the body actually because this is turning out really nice And then into the last one, we're going to go over. Now to go up to the next row, I'm going to chain behind it. So that aligns the yarn to come up to the next level. And then we're going to go into there. And then behind, and then around. Now, if you want extra texture, you could actually make puffs out of the yarn. So we're going to go behind, grab that yarn. Hi, Tay Tay. Behind, then around, then behind, and you can actually make a bump and go around, and that'll lock in that texture even more if that's what you want. Which I think there's enough texture in the yarn, I don't want to add extra so. I'm just going to keep working my way across. Now, be aware as you turn your work, it might give you a right and a wrong side. So it might be that you should be, I'm going to find out here in a second, changing the order in which you do them. So you can see that the texture is on the surface on this side and the texture is on the surface on this side. So we're going to chain one, come up, and I want all the texture to be on the back side. So bring it across. 
So we're going to do our first one just into it. Then we'll do our next one around. So now we're working in front instead of behind. And that'll force that texture to stay on the same side of the fabric we're making. So we're back to our first row. And we'll go behind. Then we'll go in front. And go around. So we want to grab our yarn and go around it and then this side is going to be in front and around in front and around in front and around All right, there we go. So I'm going to keep working this pattern. And I'm going to use up all that yarn I spun today. It's just going to take a while. So I'll put you on time lapse. And through the magic of YouTube, we'll be back when it's done. Because it'll be really fast for you. Okay, because I fail as often as I succeed, I tore everything out. <clears throat> I redid my foundation single crochet for 20 stitches. And then I did a row of single crochet. It doesn't have enough structure if I do it every row. So we're changing our plan. And I'm going to find my end here. There we go. Just a bit. I mean, I'm still going to do the one around, one behind, one around, one behind, but we're going to change it slightly. Let me get myself set up here. Okay. So first one, we go around. Next one, we go behind. And then around. And then behind. But the difference I think is going to be I'm going to put two rows of single crochet between each band of the textured yarn just to give it more support and more structure. Because the way I was working it, it was just pulling in and getting tangled and just it wasn't working out. And because, you know, I only half know what I'm doing, sometimes when things don't work out, I just go back to the beginning and try again. So we're going to see how this works out. So I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm going to put an extra row or extra rows in between. Now it's going to end up being two rows because I'm going to go across and back so I'm back to where my textured yarn is coming in. And that should give it a little more structure and make it a little more pretty and less looking like a hunk of crap, which is what it was looking like. And for me, 
like stitching is fun so I don't mind if I have to rip out and repeat and I obviously messed up somewhere here so I'm just going to correct it and skip a stitch and stitch into the last one all right now I'm going to go across and I'm going to find where I dropped that stitch one. now I'm doing single crochets because they'll be a better structure than double crochets it'll be a little firmer fabric in between Now I'm also thinking it's easier to do the stitch in front rather than behind. So I think I'm not tearing it out again, but I think I'm going to reverse it. So I'm going to go around and then in front and around and in front rather than behind. It's just easier to do. And yes, you can mock the way I hold my hook and my crochet and everything because I do it my own way, self-taught. I read a book. That's how I learned to crochet. All right, so now we're going to reverse our work again, single crochet, and we're going to go around, make sure you leave enough slack there, and in front. Then I can see my stitches better and I can control things better. It's just easier to go in front. So I guess basically the lesson is don't be afraid to backtrack, change your plan, and try again. Because I think this time it's going to work out a little better. Let me finish this row. We'll have a look. Oops. This one, oh no, that was right. And around. Right. And around. And in front. And around. And around. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, that looks much better. Much more structure to it. All right. So I'm going to continue with that. So it'll be two rows of single crochet, then a row of the textured yarn. And I will be back and we will see how it's looking. Okay, so apparently math isn't my strong suit. If you're doing every three rows, you have to alternate your front and back stitches to keep your texture on the same side. How long did it take me to figure that out? Long enough, but <laughs> just to let you know, I am not perfect. Um, but doing those two rows of single crochet in between actually gave it the look that I wanted. And you can see how the varying colors work into that. Now I'm thinking this would be fantastic for like a patch pocket on a cardigan. You could just keep working it like this and you'd have all these stripes of color on the outside. I think it would look really cool. But regardless, that's where I'm at with that. And now I have a headache. So I'm going to go and take care of that and maybe finish this up at some other point. But that is our Yeet Free Yarn for today. So I hope you enjoyed this little video with some successes, some fails. Um, I know this yarn won't be to everybody's taste because it is so chaotic, but I kind of love it. And the fact that it came out so well balanced, is it, 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 it's, it's, it's fantastic because I'm not well balanced, so my yarn should be. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.
Bye.